breaking news this week, ladies and gentlemen, as I am proud to announce that the Briar Rabbit is starting a brand new YouTube channel this week. It is going to be all about Thief, covering Thief daily, Destiny. He's going to be moving on from Destiny. He's going to be covering Thief. He's going to be playing the game every single day until the end of time. Expect daily Thief content from Briar Rabbit on his brand new <laughs> channel. Daily Thief content, ladies and gentlemen. This Guys, I couldn't be more excited games. about this myself. Um, Thief, as we all know, is one of my favorite games of all time. And, uh, you know, getting into the PvP, the strategy of the PvE, getting into those Thief raids is going to be outstanding! <laughs> Love your enthusiasm, Briar. When are you going to be launching this brand new Thief series? Uh, it should come sometime in 20... <clears throat> 20-something... <laughs> How about your Advanced Warfare Tips and Tricks series? We've been waiting a long time for that. Um, <laughs> TBD, TBD. Yeah, TBD, TBD. Black Ops 3. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. It's coming soon. <laughs> What's up, everybody? So, Welcome to the Beastly Thought Show. Hope you guys are doing well. What episode are we on, guys? It's like 79? 79, yeah. Big, 79. big number. Like, big we're, ten, we're 10 past a really good number. So we're getting up there, all right? 69 is the great number. 79, I guess if you haven't seen episode fun. 69 yet, you got to go back and watch it because it was that? it was obscene. <laughs> 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 too far, too far. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to we had to reel it back in for you guys. But we're here today, uh, looking forward to having some great great conversations and bringing you guys some exciting video game news. What's up, fellas? What you guys been playing this week? Oh my God. Uh, I, I've been playing Destiny, but more than that, I've been reading about Destiny, reading all of the games coverage that's been coming out of Gamescom, uh, the Game Informer stuff, uh, interviews, just, it's been unbelievable Destiny news. I did get around to finally playing the Phantom Pain, or Phantom Menace, what was it what called? The metal? Yeah, Metal Gear, that, that Metal Gear, it came out, for, they, they released it for free finally on PlayStation Ground Zeroes. Before. Ground Zero, thank you. Yeah, that game sucks, man. The controls are all wacky. Uh, like it, the graphics are amazing, and like the idea of like kind of sneaking around into this base is pretty cool. But man, I, I do not dig on the way Metal Gear controls. Oh well, I guess everybody can't be pleased. I guess as a longtime Metal Gear fan, I kind of expected it to feel that way. Yeah, yeah, what that's true. I haven't played Metal Gear since Metal Gear Two, uh, and w the reason I didn't pick up Metal Gear 3 or Metal Gear 4 is because I remember in Metal Gear 2 just having those like long periods of time where I wasn't doing anything but watching a cutscene that didn't really make any fucking sense. So it, it, it I did fell become, right into the groove with this one. <laughs> part, part 2 did get convoluted, I guess, but yeah. uh, I really liked the PSP one, Peace Walker. To me, that was probably the, my favorite Metal Gear experience. I, I'm sad to hear that you don't like the game, but I know that Briar Rabbit sometimes shits on games that are great because of their controls. That's so, true. I mean, if it, uh, you made a game that has awesome graphics, it has cutscenes that are way too long and don't seem to make any sense, and <laughs> uh, the controls suck. <laughs> yeah, so <Sorry>. and those, <laughs> like, <laughs> those happen, then that's the case. I, I understand yeah. why people like Metal Gear, and I'm not shitting on Metal Gear. It's just not It's not my bag, you know? It's not my cup of tea. So yeah. now, if, if my memory serves, it's been free on PlayStation Plus for PS4 and now on the Xbox One as well. Is it available yes. free on the Xbox One? That's good. It's, it's, a, it's available right now free on the Xbox One. So if you guys got one, go ahead and download it. I, I downloaded it, but I got it on everything else, so I figured, what the hell am I downloading? I've also been playing some more Rocket League, which I don't want to talk about anymore because I feel like we've covered that game to death. Yes. I also uh, downloaded, oh, crap, I forgot the name of the game already. Uh, black and white game. You, it's a side scroller kind of puzzle game. It's free on PlayStation Four right now. Limbo. Limbo. Thank Limbo. you. Love that game. Love that game. I think it's it's really cool game. Uh, I, I haven't gotten too far in it yet. I've played through what might be considered as the first level. Not real sure. Uh, I I think it's really cool. I don't know if I'll stick with it long enough to finish it, but for free, hey man, that's that's a pretty cool game. Yeah, yeah, I love Limbo. I played it on my Xbox 360, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a great game, and I'm happy to see it, but I played it and beat it. And, don't and know I, also, why I, I went to it. download Journey, and I can't find it. Like, I even searched for it on the PlayStation Store. I couldn't find it. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Did they pull it down or something? I haven't seen it. No, oh, no, it's on the store. I accessed it, no problem, so. I don't know. Maybe I can't spell Journey correctly. 
I was such a big fan of the big fan of the band back in the eighties. I don't know. I was gonna say, Briar, did you search the video game or were you searching for the band? Which was it? Big difference. Journey, old school, bring bring the fucking eighties back, damn it. That's right, that's right. And other than that, I've been I've been rocking it here, man. Like as a lot of you know, I work for Planet Destiny or I make videos with Planet Destiny. Uh, streaming has been awesome. Like the, doing streams on Planet Destiny is just so fun. Uh, Robbie, you've been there. It's it's just a blast to hang out there. Um, I, and with all of the news that have been that's been coming out of for the Taken King, it's just been like I'm playing less than I am anticipating. You know, like I'm just like going nuts on making videos right now, and it's been awesome. So definitely check out Planet Destiny for just a ton of videos about the Taken King right now. No, during the pre during the pre show, you said that you guys have been like releasing a video on the hour every hour. Yeah, I mean, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but we've been going hard. We've been going hard. Yeah, now, it's just been incredible. Unfortunately, I didn't really get a chance to see too much of Gamescom. I had a really over encumbered work week, uh, and the only thing I, I really saw from Gamescom was Microsoft's conference. You guys want to talk about some of these revelations? Uh, well, let's get, let's finish up what you've been playing, Robbie. So this week I've been playing uh, the Rare Replay that just came out. It's a collection yeah, of 30. Yeah, tell me about that. No gold in I. I was really disappointed to see that. So it's a collection of 30 Rare games all the way from 1985 to 2008. Like, it's not even just a collection of Rare's best titles and some of their worst titles, but it's like an amazing look at video game history itself from the early days when video games were very simple, pixelated small things to massive AAA exclusives. Like, it's amazing to see. It. I have gained such an appreciation for video games now and where they are, because back in the day, wow, they were super simplistic. There was nothing to them. Like, games back then were super simple, and just, yeah. So, a lot of the games in this collection are very good. There's Banjo-Kazooie, there's Conker's Bad Fur Day, there's Perfect Dark, there's Cameo, there's Slalom, there's everything. Killer Instinct, Battletoads is an amazing collection of games for thirty dollars. I would definitely recommend it. Which, which Killer Instinct been... is on there? Which one? Both of them? The first one? I think the first one. Yeah, first one's on there. Holy hell! One hell of a collection. Yeah, if you want a good value, I would recommend it. Most of the games. How much are... is it, Robbie? Thirty dollars for thirty That's... games. Oh, incredible wow. value. That's incredible yeah. value. Yeah, thirty for thirty. Damn. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was really considering not not even giving that game a go because. A majority of the games that are in that collection that are really great, I still have. Uh, yeah. But to get a, a arcade perfect for the Killer Instinct alone is worth thirty bucks. Holy hell! What else yeah, you were saying? I don't think of stuff from here. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> is that it, Robbie? What else have you been playing? I've also been playing Destiny this week. I have yeah. to tell you guys, I am done with Crucible. I am sick of Thorn, 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 Thorn <laughs> everywhere. I am done. I am done with that damn gun. It is so frustrating. I am just anticipating that 2.0 patch. I can't wait for the Taken King news, but speaking of that, let's get right into it, guys, the Taken King news that's happened this week. because well, We haven't so heard what Beast has been playing yet. I know everybody's excited to get into the news, but uh, I feel like what we've been playing is an integral part of the podcast each week. I'm sorry, yeah. Beastly. Go ahead. <laughs> it's no problem. My shoes have not been stepped on. I played some Destiny this week, not too much. I did uh, three runs of the Prison of Elders with my wife. Uh, I played some Last of Us. I did some Last of Us today, too. I was playing with the Beastly Thoughts uh, uh, crew that's in the Last of Us, my, my team. And we ran uh, Best of Ten today, so we've been playing for about three hours. I played some of you as, uh, as well, Robbie. I've been playing my yeah. Vita. I beat uh, Muramasa. I've been playing, yeah, I actually played some... Uh, Minecraft. I spent like two hours playing Minecraft this week, which was really alleviating all the stress from work. So, Brian, before you slap me down, I had a really rough week, and I wanted to let my imagination run wild, and it did. And what I just version did you play? That's what I'm curious about. I played the, the new Windows 10 beta. No, I played the the PS4 and the Vita version, okay. uh, and that's what I've been playing. But it was a very good stress relief, and that's pretty much been it for me. Uh, I I did play. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. The, the free Xbox One game, So Many Me's. It's yeah. like a, a side scroller with a little marshmallow looking character. Played some of that, played some Rayman Legend on the Xbox, and put about two hours in on State of Decay on my Xbox One. It's been one of those weeks. It's been really a, a long work week, but I've still found time to dig in deep and play some video games. And that's been what I've been into. So we can continue on the news with the Revelations of Destiny. 
the Taken King. Yes, Mr. Rabbit. I got one question. I, I got a homework assignment for you, Beastly. I want you to, if you, you own the PC version of Minecraft, right? Yes. Okay, so if you can get the Windows 10 beta for free, mm-hmm. do you have Windows 10 on your computer? Hey, Cortana. Yes, okay, you do. So can you play that for next week's show? Because I'd like to hear what what your thoughts are. Like, I'd like to hear about it, because I don't have Windows 10. Um, I don't know, Robbie, do you have Windows 10? But you don't play Minecraft, so you're the only person qualified to speak on this subject. So I, I will I'd like that. to hear about it for next week. For sure. You can expect it. And Windows right. 10 is pretty damn good, guys. Is it? Yes, much better than 8. Brad. As soon as I have it confirmed that uh, my streaming software works with Windows 10, I will be upgrading, definitely. Of course you will. Yeah. You hate Windows 8. We know it. It is bad. <laughs> it is like well, unbelievable how bad it is. All right. The Taken King, guys. I mean, this week Bungie released so much information. There's no way we can go over it. Uh, if you want to hear like a full like thoughts and opinions thing, check out the Planet Destiny podcast. I mean, we talked about it for two hours twice. <laughs> Like you guys did an podcast. amazing job covering it, too. I listened to both podcasts all the way through. You guys did a phenomenal job. I absolutely loved it. Okay, so today I think we – I'd like to get your guys' opinion. I'm going to stay somewhat quiet. I'll just, like, kind of prod the conversation, but I'd really like to hear your guys' opinions on, like, what's going on. And I'd like to start off with there's going to be a new social area called the Dreadnought, right? Uh, yes. This is going to be like a patrol area. It's, uh, you know, a new – well, it's a new patrol area. But it's going to be based on this spaceship that, you know, is Oryx's. He's going to be revolving Saturn. What do you guys think about this? We're going to have new public events. We're going to be able to cause public events that result in boss fights and new loot. Uh, It's not going to be just a walk in the park like other patrols are. There's actually going to be danger involved. What do you guys think? This sounds like such a massive update to the patrol mode. I absolutely love because in the patrol mode, like you're basically shooting enemies like level fives and stuff like that that are super simple to take down. Patrol is kind of lackluster at the moment. I think including bounties into that, including like mini bosses to fight. I think this sounds absolutely brilliant. The dreadnought, the concept art they've shown, the screenshots, it looks absolutely amazing. And Am I wrong about this, but doesn't the raid take place in the Dreadnought as well? Yeah, so it's going to be kind of like uh, the Vault of Glass where Venus, you have the patrol of Venus, uh, and the raid begins on the Venus, patrol. right? So That's instead of, yeah. yeah, instead of with uh, uh, the Dark Below where even though you were kind of on the moon, like it wasn't accessible, uh, one of the cool things about the Venus raid was that you could you could be on patrol and see like a group trying to get into the Vault of Glass by, mm-hmm. like, holding those sink plates. And, like, you're riding by on a Sparrow just doing bounties. You're like, hey, I'll stop. I'll help these guys out, take out, take out a couple uh, Praetorians, help them get into the Vault of Glass, and then, you know, go on your way, you know, and get, like, a wave for your effort, right? It was a super yeah. cool experience. I think that's what this is going to be, right, is there's, like, the raid is going to begin in the... You're still going to have to go into the raid specifically from the uh, Destiny, like, menu, but, like, that beginning portion, I think, is probably going to be available in the patrol, too, which I think is awesome. Definitely. So, so let me get this right. The Dreadnought's going to be a, another social, it, it kind of just a regular patrol, but it's more social, you said? No, it's going to be a patrol. It's going to be a patrol. So just like the Cosmodrome or Venus or okay. the Moon. You know, so you. it's going to be like a patrol like that, but instead of taking place on a planet, it's going to take place on this huge ship. And sparrows are not going to be available, so it's all going to be you're hoofing it for the entire thing. Yep. Okay, and, and the enemies are going to be much stronger. You will have many opportunities to get your ass handed to you. It'll be a yeah, real challenge understand. this time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. That, uh, that that sounds really really good. I mean, everything they've been doing is making this game more and more the phenomenon it is. Yeah, and your level cap is going up to forty too. So currently, like the leveling is weird, right? Is like your guardian is level twenty, but then you can get a light level up to thirty four. Uh, that's going away. It's now going to be just an experience level that caps out at 40, and then light will have different implications as far as how powerful your gear is. Yes. This is will this affect everything previously as well, or just? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is. I mean, this is nearly a reboot for the Destiny universe. Yeah. And, and this is going to take effect with the Taken King. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So your, yeah. Your new level. Your 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 level isn't going to be, isn't going to be, 
made through your gear, right? It's you, you remember getting to level 20 and then you had to grind to get that yeah. legendary gear to get to you know level 30 or level 32 mm-hmm. or level 34. That's gone. Now you're just going to be able to kill things to get to level 40, right? It's just ba- base experience, but then there still will be light level on gear, but that will just be how much defense that gear gives you and how much attack power that the gear has. That makes so much more sense. I can't oh, believe they finally Completely. figured that out. Oh, the leveling up system has always been extremely convoluted in this game. Only those who spent just tons and tons of time, you know, really fleshing it out, got a grasp of it. You know, uh, it took me a long time to understand what was going on with the light initially. Yeah. So I'm really happy that they kind of gone back to just the standard across many RPGs. Your experience is going to actually level you up. Thank That's God. one of the things they're doing too, Brett. Is that they're kind of I'm sorry. Uh, Oops. Yeah, and they're kind of. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, you didn't! <laughs> They're kind of trying to simplify all those systems uh, that are kind of so complex. Like, for for veteran Destiny players, right, is you understand what Etheric Light does, you understand what Plasteel Plating does, you understand what Ascended Shards do, you understand what all that stuff is. But to a new player, just jumping in, it's like, why are there so many different, like, economies in this game? It doesn't make any sense. Like, you got different upgrade materials for Vault of Glass gear, for Crota's End gear... Uh, you know, it's just, if you want to get a, you know, like, wh- what do you do with Etheric Light? Like, where does Etheric Light come from? How, yeah. how come you've got a Fatebringer that does 365 attack and mine only does 300? You know, like, th- that kind of stuff is really confusing to a new player. I think they're trying to simplify that. I think that's really exciting, actually. Definitely. I think this is an amazing change, because I never liked these light levels, to be honest. Like, after you hit level 20, it's a pure grind, and oh, honestly, it's, it's not terrible. fun. It's Especially better Dark now. Below. Especially when Dark Below came on, you had to grind the raid to get like those uh, radiant energies and stuff like that. Like, who it's wants pure, to do it's that? Pure, pure that was the worst. You drop too. I don't know what they were thinking when they did that. Like, make it purely. Well, there's still going to be a grind. Space. Like, it's still an RPG, or you know, it's still got RPG elements. Of course, there's still going to be a grind to it. You know, like, but it'll be more fun. It'll make a lot more sense. I, I I don't know. Like, if it's too fast, then it could get boring after a while because you run out of stuff to do. So they got to balance it pretty well. But uh, I think what they're going to try to do is, like, you're you're, you're going to hit level 40 pretty quickly, right? You're going to level up to 40 pretty quickly. And then it's going to be likely. all about getting that that awesome gear that increases your, your defense or your attack level just a little bit, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more. But your old legendaries, they're garbage now. <laughs> your kind of. not getting upgraded to the new attack levels. Your Praetis Revenge, not getting upgraded. Your, oh, no. Yeah, all, your Galahorn, get nerfed. <laughs> yeah, that too. I heard, I heard about that. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. So, like, uh, all those old legendaries, man, they're they're going the, you know, they're not going the way of the Dodo. You can still use them, but I mean, all the new game stuff game. is going to have higher attack values, higher defense values, uh, and you're going to want to be using that stuff. So it's... So, the, the, inevitably, inevitably, they're going to turn into green weapons green uh, drops. Okay, so that's the other thing, right? Is they said that they're redoing the tiers of what weapon, like what, how good weapons are at which tier. So right now, once you hit kind of like 34, right, is legendaries are all you're looking for, maybe exotics, but I'm wondering what they're going to do. They haven't really gone into like how specific this is, but I think what they're going to do is kind of spread out the tiers of how good weapons are. So like blues might be a little bit better than what we're used to. You won't just instantly dismantle it when you see it. You might give it a shot, like, hey, this might be worth something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. That's all speculation, but we'll see. How about that Solar Thunder Lord, hey? Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, so we don't know if it's a Solar Thunder Lord, right? I made a video about this. It just seems like, like it. Yeah. It does look like one. So there's like a three-second clip in one of the videos that uh, Game Informer released and man, that gun looks exactly like a Thunderlord, with two exceptions. It's painted red, and instead of having electricity flying off the frame, it's got flames coming off the frame. And what that means to Destiny, I think, is super exciting, right? It's like, it could mean, A, there's just a, you know, Solar Thunderlord with a different name that's an exotic. Yeah, different variant. It could mean that we're able to change the elemental damage types on exotics. That's incredibly Ooh, exciting. That'd be cool. <laughs> that's, ama- that's amazing. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? So right now, I'm not throwing away any exotics. <laughs> like if I Me get either. an exotic that I already have, I'm fucking keeping it. <laughs> I'm keeping it too. 
Um, and if you can change the exotic, if you could change the flavor of an exotic, what about exotics that currently don't have a flavor like Hawk Moon or Mita Multi Tool? No Land Beyond. Yeah, kinetic energy <laughs> only not? exotics. Imagine if we could add Solar Burn or Arc Burn or Void Burn oh, to them. Solar damage, No Land Beyond. That would be amazing. That would be cool. That would be something. I don't know how good it would be, but it would be I, I'm more thinking fun. about Hawk Moon and like uh, Mita Multi Tool because those are. I know No Land Beyond is a piece of shit. Let's. It's <laughs> not lie. But uh, still, I mean, like, imagine having a Hawk Moon that does arc damage, bringing that into the Nightfall with you. Oh, my right God. Face. That gun is already <laughs> so powerful, even in PvE. It's one yeah. of the top guns in PvP, but that would oh, be yeah. incredible. It's going to stay one of the top guns in PvP. Oh, definitely. Especially if the hand cannons, it's the one that's probably getting the least nerfed. But we're also getting 30 new exotics. 30? 30 yes. new exotics? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. In one update, 30 yeah. new exotics? Holy shit! Yeah, yeah we've, we've seen a couple of them. Like we've seen, uh, there's a helmet for the warlock that's got like reindeer horns. That one looks crazy. I the love Planet that. The Destiny team has been calling it the Jackalope helmet. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've seen the sleeper simulant, which is going to be a heavy, heavy weapon that's a fusion rifle. Uh, and Dusty uh, Bungie has described it as kind of like a railgun that has like a bouncing, a bouncing projectiles. Weapon. Yeah. Um, we've seen the Jade Rabbit, which is going to be a scout rifle that looks really cool. And, of course, that's going to be the first one I want. You of course, you're excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. that. I think that was a PlayStation exclusive. It is, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we've seen a ton of stuff. Uh, we also got a sneak peek at the Dark Blade. I mean, we've, get, we've got a sneak peek at the strikes are going to be much less about bullet sponges and more about raid light mechanics. So you're going to actually have to, you know, figure these strikes out. And the strikes are going to be randomized. You might go into a strike one time, and it's got taken enemies. You might go in the next time, and it's got different types of enemies. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So they're getting, like, more mileage out of just a strike. And they're redoing some of the old strikes. What, what, do, you, what do you mean? So, like, uh, uh, the Dust Palace, which is one of the older PlayStation strikes... Uh, that came out with the game originally. It was a PlayStation exclusive with the launch of Destiny. Uh, that's a Cabal strike. Sometimes when you go in there now, it's going to be a Taken strike. Yep. It's going to be yeah. random. Yeah. So, it's, it, I mean, it's big. It, it, this this update is huge. Plus, we're getting update 2.0, Robbie. So, you're pissed off about the Thorn and PvP. I played... I'm with you, Robbie. I played... Uh, I went... <laughs> I had two flawless runs in Trials of Osiris and one 8-2 and two run. And uh, Thorn is basically like the meta game, right? It's like the entire meta game is Thorn and shotguns. Yeah. And that's that is incredibly disappointing for. A, but the a game, game with so, so many, many weapons, weapons too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's so disappointing. So update 2.0, the anticipation. I'm anticipating it coming out about two weeks before the Taken King. I agree. Uh, yeah, a week or two or yeah. something like that. So Definitely. that is going to basically rebalance all the guns. Uh, they've changed the way damage and range kind of work in Destiny. So uh, guns that should be good close range are going to be good close range, but not good long range. Thorn, last word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and guns that should be good long range, like scout rifles, are going to be good long range. So like the Mita Multi-Tool, I'm thinking that, that gun is going to be awesome now. Yeah, really? it's already really good in Crucible. It's going to be definitely very good with this patch. Yeah. So I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am for the Taken King. Now, obviously, I am super biased. <laughs> like, yes, I love the game. you're part of a Destiny it's, network, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, like, obviously, I'm super biased. I want this game to be good, and I'm seeing all the changes, and they're all making me excited. I am disappointed that there's only one new patrol. I would have liked to see two. I'll be honest with you. I would have liked to see two patrols. Really, no. Yeah. I... I I'm glad that there's a raid. I'm really, I was really disappointed when there was no new raid in House of Wolves, uh, and I'm still disappointed about it, to be honest with you. I don't think Prison Elders is anything as good as a raid. Definitely. Um, but I'm, I'm actually really happy that they're leaving the old legendaries behind. I'm really glad that they're rebalancing the exotics. You know, I, I'm just, I'm psyched about this. I can't wait. And uh, Digglebot, man, he's gone. He's. <laughs> Not no, Diggle, but just no more. R.I.P. Yeah, they're he's not good. only getting a new voice actor. They're getting the man. 
Nolan North, yeah. The man. He's going to redo all of the old lines in well, Destiny. And did you hear that he's not reading, I mean, listening to any of uh, Peter Dinklage's old lines? He doesn't want to hear what he sounded like. Yeah. He wanted to do his own take <laughs> on the Dinklebot. Yeah. So it will be the Nolan bot from this point on. Um, uh, you know, Nolan North is the man. Uh, I think he does really, really great work. I think it speaks for himself. For itself. He's been in uh, the Uncharted series. Uh, what else? He was Desmond in... Uh... He was in The Last of Us, of course. Um, I, that was Troy Baker, wasn't it? He no, was he was Dave in The Last of Us. He yeah. was David. Oh, okay. The cannibal. Remember, remember the guy who Spoilers. was eating Whoops. people? <laughs> Spoilers. He said it first, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was David. But um, so yeah, I yeah. mean that's exciting. And to go along with that, they're restructuring Vanilla Destiny, right? Like all those that storyline that you remember as Vanilla Destiny is going to get it completely restructured. So, for instance, remember the Sword of Crota mission when you yeah. first got that sword? Yep. That is now going to be part of Eris's quest, Eris Morn's quest. So you're not going to play through that like you would have in the Taken King. If you got the Taken King for like a brand, like brand new, like this is your first Destiny experience, you wouldn't play through that mission as part of the main story. You play that through that as part of Eris's quest line. Oh wow! Oh wow! Man. Yeah, I didn't actually know about that. I knew and about that. Cool. Oh, just, a lot. That's crazy. Oh yeah, this is. I mean, they're completely restructuring this game. It's it is a huge update. Like it really <laughs> is. Now some of these changes aren't going to be really that valuable to players who've already like. Who played through this for a year, but for new yeah. players, I think this game is going to be a lot more streamlined. I think people are going to really dig on it. Definitely, yeah. I think this is really great for people who are just coming into Destiny for the first time and want to get into the Taken King and all of everything that's going on. I think this is a wonderful way to do that. I am so excited about the Taken King now. My hype has gone from kind of minimal to like way up here. Like oh, yeah. I love all these changes. I am just, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I love Destiny. I really love what they're doing. And, Robbie, this is fucking Bungie, so you know that they're surprises, right? Yes. They're not They're not letting all the beans out here. There's no Definitely way. Not. Like, no. For, even for the House of Wolves, there was plenty of stuff we didn't know about until the game came out, right? Like, the lighthouse, the treasure room. We didn't know about that stuff. We didn't know about uh, how the bounties would work with Petra Venge. I mean, and even two weeks after the House of Wolves came out, we're still getting new bounties. We even got a new mission. You know, yes, that's true. That's yeah. the kind of stuff that I'm really psyched about because, yeah, they're giving us a ton of new information and news right now, but it's Bungie. They're definitely holding some a lot of stuff back. They're going to hold out. Especially because this is a $40 expansion. Like, it's massively, it's way bigger than even the previous two. Yeah. Like, whatever this, whatever they haven't told us about yet is probably going to be, like, substantial, like something we haven't seen yet. And I'm, yeah, that really gets me excited. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm loving this. There, there are more active accounts on Destiny now than there ever has been. I think the last number I heard was 26 million yeah. active users. That's fucking insane, man. Yeah. Uh, and, and with them adding new content like this, it's something for everybody. It's one yeah. of those situations where it's like going into Golden Corral or Ryan's. There's something you're going to enjoy in this game, no, no matter probably, what. You probably know. not in Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> God damn you, bro. Uh, there, there might actually be nothing you enjoy at Golden Corral. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. You get the no, fucking point. No. <laughs> oh, my. With Destiny, there's just a myriad of things that you can do in it. The, the way they're changing up all these different play styles, not only do you have strikes, you've got raids, you've got... Um, You've got the Prison of Elders, all these new things they're adding constantly, changing weapon types, adding expansions. It's just they're building on this world. It's like real world building. And, and at the same time, more people are jumping in without any more real story. People just really love this game. It's, it's a phenomenon. To me, it's really amazing what's happened with this. Yeah. I remember when the game first came out, we actually talked about it. Was it going to last? You know, do, I, do you remember the conversations we had? Is this game going to last? And, Everybody thought it was it wasn't going to last, yeah. and, and it's. I don't think this game's going to go anywhere for a long, long time. I think this is going to be uh, the staple of first-person shooter RPGs for years to come. I, I, I especially to that personally. I mean, 
before the alpha came out, this game was not on my radar, right? It's like Bungie had made awesome games, Halo, but to me, to me, the Halo games had been in a decline in quality since like mm, Halo Three. Two. Yeah, you, you could even go so far as Halo Two. Yeah. Uh, so this great game wasn't really on my radar. What they were talking about wasn't really that exciting to me, and frankly, I wasn't listening. I was so involved in Call of Duty, I was I was all over Call of Duty. And then I played the alpha, and I was like, holy shit, this is something completely different, you know? Yeah. Like, And it's got that spot-on gameplay that, you know, Bungie's so known for, but it's got so much more. Yeah, yeah it, it has, there's it so much more than Halo. There's more in this game than pretty much any first-person shooter I've ever played, and I don't play it that much, and I'm telling you that. So there's yeah. just something new to do every time. You know, you can do go solo, you can go with your friends, you can go against your friends. There's loot, loot, loot on top of loot. It's, it's an amazing game, and I'm, I'm excited to see what happens in the next ten years. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I think it's going to continue to grow. I think they're making a really good decision with the Taken King to get new players in there, and you know, you have to keep adding new players in to keep revitalizing that community. People care about this game too. The players care about this game. They want to see the best out of this game. Yes, we all do. All right, that's all I got for the Taken King. Uh, me there's too. <laughs> plenty more to talk about. Trust me, I could go on. I could literally fill this whole podcast up with Taken King news. <laughs> of course, you about could, it. Yeah. But this isn't the Planet Destiny podcast. No, <laughs> I already recorded two of those this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get on to the uh, other news. All right, so Remy, uh, you want to get us started? Yeah, for sure. So this happened, I think, over the weekend. Um, I think this is a very notable League of Legends streamer. I personally don't really care about that game, but I know it's a very popular person. So a streamer gets banned from Twitch for taking a SWAT. I don't remember what their name was. Is it faking a SWAT or taking a SWAT? I think it's Trick2G was the Twitch streamer. Yeah. So yeah, he basically faked a SWAT at the end of a live stream and uh, got in trouble from it and got banned from Twitch. For, I think I think he's already reinstated. He's already back on Twitch. Okay. So, okay. for those who don't know, getting swatted is basically when um, somebody will call in like a, a fake 911 call up to your house, right? Uh, and the SWAT team kind of has to respond to that call. Like maybe yeah. they say there's a kidnapping or there's a guy like with a gun, and they basically have to respond with a SWAT team, and what people do, and this is highly illegal, is they they fake these calls to streamers who are live on Twitch at the time, and then the, the SWAT comes in, you know, the streamer gets taken down, sometimes even arrested erroneously. It's uh, horrible. It is. It's a horrible thing to do. It's really rotten. Uh, it's one of the reasons that I try and hide my name so, so much on on this show or in in general is I, I, I really do try and hide as much information as I can because I've got two kids at home, right? I don't want the SWAT team. I don't want some something happening to my kids because I decided to, you know, do a podcast, right? Yeah. That's that's really the motivation behind that. Otherwise I wouldn't give a shit. But because people do stuff that's this nasty and because they they endanger people's lives by doing this, you know, anytime and you have People busted in your house with loaded weapons, somebody can fucking die. And this is a problem because this is a serious thing. A lot of people do these SWAT pranks and they think of it as just a joke, but it's a serious thing. Like, this is a real SWAT team that's been called into a hostage situation. You don't know if someone's going to get shot or what's right. going to happen. Like, some family man may be streaming on SWAT and, or streaming on Twitch, and a SWAT team may be pointing guns at his kid's head. Like, it's not, it's not cool. anything to joke about. It's very serious. It's so, what this guy did is faked it. He got his buddy to come in, pretend he was a cop, and pretend SWAT. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Immature, honestly. That's not something to joke about, just me personally. I don't think he should have joked about it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the guy personally, and I don't know what his situation was or how many people he had involved, and if they were just watching it on Twitch. Sometimes jokes get, you know, uh, misunderstood. I think that it was just done in bad taste. It's one of those jokes... That was in bad, in poor taste. Yeah. Uh, he probably shouldn't have done it. Uh, I'm happy he was able to get back on Twitch, and, and maybe now he's learned a lesson. The thing is, when you have something like this, swatting people, 
there's a real bad negative connotation with this whole action. And uh, Especially you, among other Twitch streamers, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, I think the people who are coming down on this guy the hardest are other Twitch streamers. <laughs> like, just saying, this motherfucker... You know, here I am, I've gotten swatted, and now this motherfucker's faking it just to get views? Yeah. Fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's at making... At the same time, like, you have to almost respect him for thinking of it first. Because you yeah. know that he did it for the views, right? Yeah. Of course he did. He did it for yeah, the views. Yes, yes, he oh, definitely guys. did. Yeah. There's, there's a, a policeman here. Can I help you? No, no. Yeah. Not, not funny. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it is kind of funny, but at the same time, <laughs> it is so, funny. Yeah, I mean, he definitely did it for the views. He definitely did it for the money, and nobody else has done it before. So, did he know it was going to get him banned off Twitch? I don't know. Probably. Well, it's, it's a lesson learned situation. Yeah. Uh, you always got to respect his ingenuity, but at the same time, not funny. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, he probably doesn't realize the seriousness of these swatting sure incidents. Like most sure people don't realize. Like, they just think of it as a joke and a harmless thing, but it's really yeah. not. It's so dangerous. I don't think of it as a joke at all. I've never been swatted. Maybe I'm, I'm 35 years old. I understand that the uh, danger that's involved in something like that. These guys go out there every day, and that's their job to protect people and possibly put other people down. So when they walk in and they break your door down, they're expecting any situation. You might yeah. turn with your damn controller in your hand and get your head blown off. Yeah. It's a very dangerous situation. Nobody should be doing it. I think people who are actually calling in these SWATs need to be penalized by the law to the highest degree of possible uh, uh, you know, penalties. Not yeah. you know going to jail for life, but these guys need to spend a few months at least in jail for doing something like this to someone that could potentially end someone's life or at least uh, change someone's life. So the problem is, Beastly, is that it's it's super hard, it's super easy to do, right? Hard, like, to once you it. find out somebody's address, you know anybody can prank phone call nine one one, right? Anybody can do that. Yeah, yeah the accessibility and then is it's ridiculous. so hard to catch somebody. It's mm -hmm. so hard to catch somebody who'd done it. Yeah. Well, it'll never end if that's the case. You know, it'll it'll just it'll persist because. Even though I'd, I'd want everyone in America and the world to be mature, that just does not happen. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you go to a video game lobby and, and you're an intelligent person, you have a conversation and you hear somebody just come on and say "fuck you, bitch." You're like, for what? <laughs> what was the point of that? People are, are, are assholes and they'll always persist. So it's an unfortunate situation. Hopefully, this guy learned his lesson. Don't be a fucking yeah, dickhead I, I and, and, and pretend to get a SWAT just for views. Yeah, he learned his lesson, I'm sure. Even if he was joking about it or he didn't understand it, well, now he probably has a better idea of that. This is not something to joke about. So, yeah. All right, so continuing on, I didn't get a chance to read this article, but I'm pretty sure one of you guys did, and I really need to know what's going on. A new article about Konami, Konami suggests grim situation at the company. Uh, I don't know what this is about, but I'm super excited to hear because Konami has been in the news for weeks yeah, I mean, this whole situation, the fire, like, flame keeps getting added to the fire, seemingly endless. And I got the article pulled up here. I'll read to you guys what happened. So, yeah, supposedly the, there are things that Konami are not looking so good. The first part of the article says that Kojima claimed he needed, like, $80 million to make the fan of pain. And, like, it was basically stuff like that. But then it gets into the culture of the company that's exposed. And it says... Cameras apparently have been placed in the corridors to monitor employee movements, while time cards are used to monitor how long everyone is taking for lunch, with those deemed to be taking too long, named, and shamed throughout the company. So that's the first part of it. Yeah. They're monitoring everyone at all times and shaming those who are taking a longer lunch break. Like, that's whatever. <laughs> You've been gone for 35 minutes. And then it keeps yeah. going. Most Konami employees aren't given their own email addresses, while sales and PR staff who have to communicate with outsiders do have permanent addresses. Many others that have one, they're routinely randomized every few months, so they keep doing that, which is odd. Any members of the staff deemed useless are apparently reassigned to other jobs, so instead mm -hmm. of being fired, they reassign them, including assembly line work at Konami's patchy slot machine factory, working as security guards, and even cleaning, cleaning up at company fitness clubs. Like, wow. this is developers. They're taking and doing that. Wowzers. Unbelievable. So all these years of making Metal Gear games, now they want to be the police state company. 
and have so, these cameras watching their employees. Like, let me ask you this. People are really excited for the next Metal Gear game. I think everybody's, like, across the board, everybody wants the new Metal Gear game, but they're pissed off at Konami, right? There's, like, these two sides. At what point do we condemn this activity enough that we just don't buy Metal Gear? Or just wait Honestly, at this point, I don't want to buy the Phantom Pain because of the studio getting shut down and Kojima's name being taken off the box. The fact that Konami is probably going to take all the money for this. I honestly don't want to buy the Phantom Pain well, after all like this. This company I is don't. clearly... Fucking that shit. They have lost their mind. This is crazy. It just it, gets... <sighs> like, and, you know, I mean, Metal Gear fans are rabid. They're going to buy this game, no matter what's coming out of Konami. Well, well it's a conundrum, Briar. I mean, because you want to support uh, Kojima's work. The, everyone's saying this is his his crowning achievement as far as Metal Gear games. He still talks about it. He talked about it at Gamescom. Um, but you hate what Konami's done. They've yeah. really burned lots of bridges. The company obviously doesn't care about the foundation that built them in the gaming, at least on the gaming side. And after hearing this news, it doesn't even seem like they care about the people who are keeping the machine running on the right, inside. Yeah. So I don't want to buy I, a game when I hear stuff like this. I don't want to yeah. support Konami. This is this is just terrible. Like it's 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 really a fucked up situation to be in. Because and there's more too. If you want me to read it off, like there's sure, some more sure, stuff I that gets even deeper. Story. So. Part of this is supported by a 2013 interview by Asashi News in which a former Konami employee was shunted from game development, so working at Kojima Productions, to working in a patchy slot factory. So basically he went from a game developer to working and fixing these slot machines, causing him to suffer severe depression. Wow. Unbelievable. So your your dollars at work here. You get a decision, right? I want the new Metal Gear game. But when I buy it, I'm supporting this kind of activity. I'm supporting a company that treats people like this. Yeah, like garbage. Yeah. Well, you... this is a situation, though, right? No matter what I happens after this situation. No matter what happens after this game. <laughs> no matter what happens after this game, I think Konami as a game developer is pretty much on the decline. Like seriously, after this point. I don't think they're planning on making games anymore. Maybe mobile games. Well, if that's the case, it's over for them, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that in the eyes of gamers, that's how we all feel. If this is uh, Kojima's last project with the Metal Gear name on it, mm-hmm. I want to see what he did. You know, and yeah, but Konami, selfish... you're, you're not supporting Kojima. You're you're supporting Konami, and you're yes. supporting the activities that they are now partaking in. You know that they spent eighty million dollars on this game. You get to stick it to them. It's your opportunity to stick it to them. No, we yeah. do not appreciate the way you are acting right now. We That's do exactly not how I feel. Treating other human beings. I, I understand you where you're coming from. You give them sixty bucks, and you, along with you know, feeding the monster. other people, are going to give them their eighty million dollars back, or you can say, no, fuck you. You don't get to treat people like that. I'm not going to give you that that sixty bucks. Briar, I gotta that's tell you, your, that's 100% that's your, how that's I feel. That's your choice. You vote with your Briar, dollar here. I, I yes. totally, I totally agree with you. And I don't have any problem not buying this game when it comes out. You guys know I'm cheap as shit anyway. But I think everybody else is going to buy this game. There are people who don't look at the moral compass of what's going on. Mm-hmm. There are yeah, people who are young true. and immature, and they go, "Hey, man, I want this game." And their mom goes out and buys it. And there are people our age who just say, "Fuck it, it's a new Metal Gear." People are going to buy this game no matter what. I think this game is going to be a commercial success at least. You know, I think it will be a critical success as well. It's an unfortunate situation, and it could be game of the year. I mean, a lot of people who have already played it are like, this is game of the year. It could be one of those experiences, and I hate Konami for what they've done. They've done this to Koji Igarashi, uh, Hideo Kojima, Silent Hills, Guillermo del Toro. They've burned so many bridges as a company that I don't want to support them. Yeah, but this is just is, criminal. I is, don't want to support this, them with this. Is this is me not buying the game, not supporting Hideo Kojima as well? No, I mean, Hideo is gone, right? Like, They're off the project. The whole studio is not involved with this game. Like, Konami is going to take the whole... I mean, he was, tweet, They're off. he was tweeting about this game yesterday, too. Because I mean, he, he still, still made it, but they're yeah, not... He made it. I don't I mean, know. He's not, tweet, he's not tweeting because he doesn't want people to look at the game. He doesn't want people to. He doesn't want people to ignore the game. He wants people to buy the game. He wants people to experience what he worked hard on. It's like if you bake a cake and you work at a, at a bakery that did some bullshit, but it's Basically, your best I think recipe. It's a, uh, clear cut white and black 
decision, right? Is there's clearly there is a line in the sand, line drawn in the sand. Either you support this or you don't. You either give them sixty dollars for this game or you don't. Yeah, That's, I don't. I, know I don't see it any other way. Like there's no gray area here. I don't know what to do. I don't even know if I want to buy this game. Like I just. I mean, I see it in YouTube comments a lot. A lot of people are like, I don't want to buy this out of respect for Kojima and the company. Like, I don't want to support Konami with this total bullshit they've done. And I agree. Like, I just, I, I, think I don't know what to do. The, here's the perfect answer to this whole conundrum. Let Hideo Kojima tell us what we should do. He made the game. If he, if he thinks that they fucked him and they took him off yeah, his project... I, you, think he, you don't think he's got, like, uh, contract obligations with... With Konami still, you think you think he can go on Twitter and start bad mouthing Konami and not get sued or arrested? No, oh, he doesn't. There's he's no not, way. Yeah. I don't know about going on there and bad mouthing him, but I don't. I don't know the man. I don't know how he would feel. You know, I I, I I've been with Konami. I mean, at least Hideo Kojima since the early the mid '90s. Look, Hideo is one person. Yeah. Konami yep. is fucking lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see this as I don't see this as a gray area at all. I see this. I mean, he's already he's already gotten paid for his work, correct? Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope so. Doesn't factor into the equation for me. Mm -hmm. but this one man. I want to know from the people in the comments. You guys, let us know what you think. Yeah, I agree. Is this a black like and white situation. I really want to know. Right, do you guys think we should support you know this new Metal Gear game? Do you guys think we should just say no to it? Konami deserves everybody to just basically turn their back on that company as a whole. I 100% agree on that. But I don't know if we say no and completely ignore this game, how it will affect the guy who spent years making it. So for me, it's a conundrum because I don't know the intricate details of what goes into development and what happens after the game is released. I don't know. You guys let us know what you think. Please say something in the comments about this whole situation. Yeah, it's tough. I I don't it's know which way I'm going to go, if I'm going to buy it or not. Cause... All right, we'll move forward. I'll just say that... You, you only can vote with your dollar in these situations. Absolutely. It's the only choice you have. All right. Uh, PS Plus turns five gift inbound for day one users. Shit, I don't think I was a day one user. <laughs> Neither was I. Neither. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> wow. Do we know yeah, what the right. gift is going to be? I don't think we do, right? It's we don't. Nice. No, it's still a mystery. What do you guys think it could be for that um, long? I would like a... Destiny Taken King theme PlayStation 4. Oh my god, Briar. That would be hard. Come <laughs> That's on. That's not happening. <laughs> Briar, you are hardcore, baby. What? I mean, hey, five years of PS Plus? That, that service fucking sucks. <laughs> like, you're hardcore for sticking with it for that long. <laughs> no, no, man. I've only had PlayStation Plus since I got my PS4, and it's been worth every penny. Uh, since I got that. It's better, now. it's better now. It's better now. But in the PlayStation you know, 3 days, man. Hell no. Oh, I wouldn't God. have brought that shit. Come on. I, no. I will say this, though. PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live has gotten better because, because of PlayStation, of PlayStation Plus. Plus. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I mean, like, together, they grow. Mm-hmm. They, they grow. Co competition makes things better for the consumer. Absolutely. Uh, PlayStation Plus, I mean, PlayStation Now, I'm sorry, I'm so excited, five years. PlayStation Now is now available on PlayStation Vita. Are you guys going to use this new... Next story, amazing... PlayStation All Vita right. has been discontinued. <laughs> <laughs> I was right? just thinking that. It's done. God damn, man. That's some talk about Vita ever again. That's cool, man. I mean, it seems like a perfect place to play PlayStation Now, right? It's playing those old retro games on your... On your Vita, that's that's a good thing, right? PlayStation Now is dead in the water, Briar. It's over. I mean, it kind of is, to be honest. Oh, like the it's over. No one's going to ever fucking use that. And especially oh. compared to the Xbox One, when they have native backwards compatibility, it works yeah. wonderful too. Like over. a lot of the games, guys, in the rare replay are th are 360 versions of those games, and they work flawlessly. Like the backwards compatibility yeah. is perfect, it's, and it's and they're always. using the backwards compatibility technology that's going to be implemented into the Xbox One. They're actually using that for some of those wow. replay games. Yes. Well, Sony should, I mean, the same way that PlayStation uh, Plus has helped Xbox games with gold, hopefully this situation in some way down the line what's, helps what's, Sony because... Um, what's the pricing structure on PlayStation now, right now? $300 for 20 minutes. It fucking sucks. It's still bad? It's, yes, it's I was terrible. wondering, I haven't investigated it in for so long that... 
Me neither. I've heard it's okay, it but it's like not... It seems like the Vita, though, is the perfect place for playing those retro games. Maybe they should just do... I don't know. Netflix. They should do like Netflix. You pay 15 bucks a month, you can play whatever games you want. They're yeah, not losing yeah. anything. I'm down. That's awesome. I would do that. It would be awesome, but they're too stupid to figure that shit out. All right, Who guys, cares so anyway? You're not going to have time for that shit, because Fallout 4 has over 400 hours to get <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, man, your segues are on fucking point, man. I love that shit. Fucking 400 hours of Fallout 4. Oh, that's that's a lot of hours. Brian, now I know you love Fallout. Oh, I I do. I know you love it. 400 hours, though, are you going to be able to, you know, it's probably, what, about 100 hours before you even beat the game. It's going to be a lot of dedication. Dude, the divorce papers are coming. (laughs) 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 Be here by Just take, like, the next oh, month man. or two off work. It'll be all good. Play Fallout 4. Yeah. Oh, man. That. I can't wait for this game. Uh, the, the next story, too, we should talk about the two kind of combined because they're so so similar. Is that Fallout 4 is going to have no level cap. So even after you finish the story, you can, still you can go. continue to level up, continue to build your character, continue to explore the world. That's something I did in Fallout 3 a ton is I finished the story. I jumped right in. back in to kind of keep exploring that world. I didn't find the spaceship in Fallout 3 until well after I had finished the story. Really? Yeah, I didn't find, you know, I didn't find all the Nuka-Cola until after I did the story. You know, like, all that stuff. There's so much to that game. You know, Bethesda builds intricate worlds. You know, that's one of the appeal to their, appeals to their games. And the fact that you'll be able to keep building as a character as you continue to explore this world, even though you finish the story, that's awesome. Yeah, it'll go on forever, pretty much. I mean, this game could possibly be a monumental, like, release. Like, this is going to be huge. I mean, this could be, like, the next step forward for video games as a whole. Well, mostly open-world games, but this is going to be one hell of a day, one November 10th. We'll be doing Beastly Thoughts episode, what is it, like, 580-something? Yeah. Whatever, right? Is we're going to be talking about... You know, recent news, Fallout 4 player hits level 1,000. <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> you know? New milestone reached. And that, uh, and like, that's, that's totally going to happen. We got to do that. We got to do that. Do not forget that shit. We got to talk about it. Wow. We're going to be like, like watching it years. Years. on our fucking walkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, will. I sure won't because I'm not old. But, you know. Shit. Robbie will be getting his graduation from high school. <laughs> <laughs> You're way off with that. But okay. oh, fuck. <laughs> I'll be there, Robbie. Thanks, <laughs> with guys. my wheelchair. With my wheelchair. You young, young thing, you. I, I, I am that. so excited for Fallout 4, guys. I, and the, like Everything I hear about it just makes me more excited. The, last week we were reporting that the game was basically done. They're mm-hmm. just polishing it. That's great news because... That's just more time for the developers to just, like, add in those that little bits sure. of awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, 400 hours of content, that's amazing. That's a ton of... You know it's not going to be bullshit, too. It's not just going to be, like, running from one place to the other because we've played Fallout before. We know how they build a game. We've played Bethesda games a ton. We know how they build a game. No level cap means you can just keep building up your character, making them better and better and better, you know... We know there's going to be a DLC for this game. We know there's going to be user-created content for this game. I, it, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm yeah, just, that's all you got to say. Just, uh, there's, a lot of, awesome. there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit. Uh, It'd be nice to see that the new Android and iOS app they just created, if they somehow put that on your Pip-Boy. It's like a little meta game that you can play. Wait, your Pip-Boy... Your phone goes into your Pip Boy if you bought the. Uh... Yeah, so it already, it's already there. It's already there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about this game. Uh, I think it'll probably be uh, be game of the year. I mean, it's fucking Fallout. Who who doesn't love this game? It's an amazing franchise, and uh, I can't wait to it. discover everything. I mean, there will be. I mean, I remember like in Fallout Three, it's like when you find like Oasis for the first time, it's like, whoa, what is this? Like, there's just so many cool, unexpected things you find in that game, and I, I mean, this will be just more of that. Like the radio yeah. station. Like, yeah, I mean, oh, do, do you really think games. you're going to be able to find everything though, Robbie? I mean, 400 hours—that's 12 complete days. After a year, yeah, maybe. That's like 12, it's almost two solid weeks of sitting in front of your TV, 
Well, I, I played Fallout 3. I, like, I, play, I binge played it for probably like a week, but I just kind of continued to play it for probably a year. You know, I just yeah. sit down and, like, I finished the story in that first week, right? But then I just kept playing it, right? It's like I, I wouldn't play it every day, but I'd come back to it and just say, let's see what else I can find in here. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah, ended up here. finding websites that said, look at this thing. Oh, I got to go find that. You know, I didn't buy the strategy guide. Yeah, like, you're, you're a real man. Game. <laughs> you're a real man, bro. Um, the next story is a little rough, and we're running out of time, so I kind of think we should skip it. What's that? Uh, all the announcement from Microsoft Games. Yeah, that would take a long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just say, we'll, we'll just sum it up like this. Microsoft did a hell of a job at Gamescom. Yeah. They showed a lot of good games. Uh, if you've got an Xbox One, you got lots of reasons to be happy this year and next year. Here, I'll, I'll this. run through like just the highlights, right? Is Quantum Break coming next year? That's exciting. That game looks yeah. amazing. Awesome. Crackdown 3. The, th- the environments are 100% destructible. No, if you no, saw that not. video... They're not. They're not. It's only for the multiplayer. They expounded they on the story. They did that at story. first? I believe they changed their story. Yeah, they just changed it last night. Oh, okay. So it is. So, it's definitely it's, multiplayer then. It's the multiplayer. Ark Survival Evolved is coming to the Xbox One. That's a very okay, popular be. survival game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's actually a really cool one. I've never played it. I've only heard that secondhand. Uh, the newest addition to the Killer Instinct roster is Battletoads. Who cares? Mm-hmm. That game was crappy. I don't understand why people love that game so much. <laughs> Scalebound. Did you guys see the yes. trailer for Scalebound? Yes, yes, that was so good. Dude, I was so on board. Shit. And then the guy says, and I'm like, I'm out. I'm like, this is total crap. Yeah. <laughs> That kid is such a punk, the main character. Bro, like, he's just headphones <laughs> on, and I'm gone. I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? I'm done. I'm he's not playing this game. Yeah, I was like, Yo, bro, <laughs> he's hey, look, man. It's like a rude jackass to beats. I don't care about his headset. He put a headset on. That game was still phenomenal. I can't wait to play it. That game looked amazing. Platinum Games is making that. They made Bayonetta 2, which is my game of the year last year. I'm super excited to see this game, man. <laughs> Here, Did you guys find it weird that the like the one more thing, the just one more thing from uh, Microsoft's conference was oh, yeah. Halo Wars Two? Halo Wars Two. Like, that was weird. Uh, people were freaking out about that, and I was like, "Well, this is awesome. Uh, I didn't expect this." But I, yeah, I, I don't like... think that's that awesome. But Halo was well, whatever. <laughs> like, I'm way Wars more excited for Halo that... Five than I am for Halo Wars. Same here. Yeah, yeah. I guess that was just their way of saying, hey, "We got some shit left over here." Uh, you get a free copy of Just Cause 2 when you buy Just Cause 3. That's a great deal. That's always nice. Yeah. yeah. Just um, it was an awesome game. I wanted to talk about the Xbox One controller. Did you guys see the Xbox One Pro Controller and the app? No. You mean with okay. the chat? So you, you've got... No. You've guys, you've guys seen the new Xbox One Pro Controller, right? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, so it's got yeah. removable thumbsticks that you can customize. Oh, the Elite. The Elite controller. Elite controller. Yeah. Elite controller. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's got you know trigger stops on the triggers. It's customizable. It's got uh, paddles on the back like a scuff controller. Thing looks it's really stuff. nice. It's gonna be one hundred fifty dollars, but if you play a ton of Xbox One, you know, and you're in the market for a scuff anyway, like it definitely competes well with a scuff. They showed off the app that's associated with this thing, and it's like it's unbelievable the amount of customization you can do with this thing on an Xbox. You can you can change the sensitivity of the thumbsticks. With an application? Yeah. Yes. An application. Yeah. You could change the you could change the sensitivity of the thumbsticks on the on the controller. You could change the sensitivity of the triggers, and you could you could change when they actually click to like uh, not firing, firing. Right. What? You can change when that happens. Yeah. There's a switch. Yeah. Right, well, I mean, you can remap all of the buttons. Wow. That's, as far as I'm concerned, that's insane. this thing is like an absolute killer for the Xbox. Scu- it sounds like it's a scuff killer, man. It's a scuff oh, yeah. killer? Oh, absolutely it's a scuff killer. Why would you buy price. a scuff if you could buy this thing for the same price? Just because it's got all the features included, too, and it's like for one price flat, you get just everything. Four panels, all this stuff, like it's all in there. That's, oh, man, yeah. the thing looks amazing. I'm I'm a scuff fan, and I know Robbie is, too. Like, scuff controllers are nice, but... No way I would buy a scuff control over this thing. <laughs> like, no yeah. It's the same way. thing, but it's cheaper, and it's got more options. It's like, why not? Yeah, yeah. and wow. like, it's so customizable. And it's it's Microsoft product, so like, if something goes wrong Microsoft. with it, Rest in peace. You, know, you get a Microsoft warranty. 
I, well, this thing looks it's, awesome. It's, it's only a matter of time, guys, before Sony follows suit here and makes their own PlayStation Platinum controller. I'm just, I I'm hope just they do. I hope so. I hope you're right about that. Uh, that controller is it needs some work as hell. Yeah, those analogs really piss me off. But yeah, uh, I definitely am going to be picking up this controller. Me I'm too. playing a lot more Xbox One now, uh, and I'm looking forward to. I was actually going to pick up Destiny on my Xbox One. Believe it or not, Brian. I I've been playing Destiny on Xbox One lately because I want to get up to uh, raid level so I can raid with Xbox uh, Destiny subscribers. Yeah, I need so to I've been I've been leveling time. up an, an Xbox account as well. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually pick it up and uh, and start a new character on there. All right, guys, it's 7:01. I think we ought to call this one quits. I actually got to light a bonfire because we're doing s'mores out back tonight. Oh, no oh, comments. No. Can I come over? You got some? You want to do some comments, Robbie? You got anything good in the chat you want to read off? Well, I haven't opened it yet. Let me do that. Holy oh, crap! Well, maybe you should have done that before you suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Time to go, guys. Right, I'm looking out. I'm looking out. All right. All right. Uh, anybody got any questions? There are a lot of comments. Wow. Thank you guys for uh, watching, by the way. Yeah. yeah there's definitely a lot appreciate people. your support. Thank you very much. But uh, now that we've got some dead air, Easley, what are you up to next week? Uh, what am I going to be doing next week? Well, I'm going to see exactly what I've got. Actually, this week at work is going to be pretty slow. So I should be able to pick up and, and play some, some really awesome games. I watched my wife... Uh, last night, playing some Witcher 3. She's at the end of the game. And don't I feel like a bitch because I'm only level 14. Uh, so I might jump back into there and play some of that. That's the problem, though, Beast, is you ain't got time for, like, every game. You know? <laughs> like, whole, like... I can't stand it. <laughs> She's but she does fall. Yeah. She, she, just, she did Dragon Age first. Now she's doing that. And you better believe she calls me a bitch when she beats him, and I don't. That's the kind of marriage I'm in. I saw her post a video of a uh, boss fight this week. Yeah, she posted that one right? last night. Yeah, she posted yeah. one last night. She whipped some guy's ass. And I was so lame. I just sat there and played The Last of Us like it was the last game on Earth. Uh, but, <laughs> hey, it's what I love to do. So hopefully this week I'll get you know get back into some more traditional gaming. I want to play some Destiny. Hopefully we can get together and play something. That, uh, I want to play Rocket League with you, Brian. I play with everyone oh my God. Know, but you. Oh, hell. I played yeah. with Robbie. I played with... Um, can you believe it? Marco Salvo didn't download it. He came too late. Oh, so, no! Uh, now it cost oh. 50 bucks. He said, uh, I didn't oh. know. I've been, oh. schooling. I've been schooling and learning so hard. They've been trying to learn me everything. <laughs> and so he completely missed out on it. I told him it was like the worst thing he could have ever done. I definitely <laughs> did everything it is. A big mistake. The worst the thing he ever done. Could have ever done is not get that game. It's so good. Uh, but right, yeah, I'll be playing games. Are we calling it a show, or are we we got some questions? <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. We call it said, a show, or we got some questions? Well, you didn't ask me what I'm going to be up to this week. I don't know. I was Ooh. asking you if we had questions or not. <laughs> yeah, I don't really see any questions. All no. right, what do you got going on this week? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is All right. stupid. <laughs> so, last week on the show, I said I was going to be uploading the first part of my Destiny Challenge series, but unfortunately I recorded that video and the webcam was freezing on me and the recording got messed up, and like when I transferred the recording over to the Movie Maker, the audio wasn't there. I couldn't get my mic audio to come through. I was super bummed out. I'm going to have to make that video again. Hopefully it'll be out this week, because I had a lot of issues, but What's I, think I'll fix the, I think I'll fix the problem now, and it'll be the No Land Beyond Challenge with Bruce Bull. So, oh, that's okay. pretty fun. Yeah, hopefully that'll go well. Um, other than that, I'll just be reporting on the news and stuff. Guys, be sure to check out Beastly's channel, Briar's channel. Of course, you've probably already subscribed. Thank you all so much for watching today. You are awesome. We love you. Yes, I I concur totally. Totally agree. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye, everybody.